What's going on, everyone? It's Tuesday, March 26th. Welcome back to Why Lose Sports NHL wagering show. Puck you. I'm Mike Burns. There is madness of in there is mad the madness of March is all around us, but it's not just the NCAA. We are in the final two weeks of the NHL season. There is so much going on. Before we get jumping into it, let's check in with our boy, NHL handicapper, Les Victory. Les, how are we doing today, buddy? Doing good, man. It is such an exciting day in the NHL. There's 12 fucking games. We have so much on this card tonight. I'm trying to figure out if it's too much. So we we, we definitely got a couple things to consider here. We have we have the cherry picker coming in tonight. We got mm -hmm. we're definitely unloading on a big one. So if you want to know what that is, 99 bucks gets you uh, that week pass. And if it fails to hit, which it does happen from time to time, you get Not to tonight see free. Not tonight. No, we're no. we're hot right now. Look at the ladder, Burns. Let's do a quick little recap on ladder this recap. ladder challenge. Five in a row. We are moving on step six, which is a three hundred and twenty dollar bet to pay around six forty, depending on your sports book. That pick is coming out probably as we speak, depending on when you're watching this thing. So we got that day six. We are starting to get into the money. We are just a couple days away from getting into the thousands of dollars from $10, Bernsey. What the fuck, man? <laughs> hey, why not, baby? We ain't stopping until we get the 10 grand, and we may not even stop then. Ooh, you're going to keep rolling it over? You go to 100. Come why on. Why not? Right? It's they just money, dude. Five more bets. It's they just print money. money every day. They make money Fucking every day. <laughs> well, we had a pretty good day over here for members as well. We caught uh, L.A. last night for the underdog bet of the night. That was a nail-biter all the way down to the end. Uh, pretty good day for members. Vegas caught them on the money line. Eichel couldn't get on the score sheet. Binder saw just a little bit too much uh, rubber last night, but we finished the night in the green, and we're going to get right to games over here. We have a big final spot matchup going on between the shitbag wings and the wagon caps. Wings are at plus 105. Caps are minus 125. All right, so. Let's start with these bullshit wings. Three and seven in their last 10. They've just absolutely sucked. But the return of Dylan Larkin, man, has really sparked this team. First game back, two goals, big 6-3 win, uh, win over the aisles. They did get beat up by Nash, but everybody's gotten fucking steamrolled by Nash. I mean, this is a monster game here for Detroit. They're one point behind the red hot caps. Lion gets the start and goal. What do you see going on over here? Lion concerns me. Uh, you know, he hasn't been spectacular. He's very been very hot and cold. I think I think James Reimer has been the better goalie uh, in this organization as of late. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that. Um, you know, there, there's been a couple days off now that they've had. I I, I kind of was expecting them to go back to Reimer in what is a essential must win game for must the Detroit win. Red Wings. If you even want to dream about getting into the playoffs, you have to win this. But you can't disregard the Washington Capitals. Wagon. Yes, their goal differential is like minus 30. And that was still, like three seasons ago. It doesn't matter anymore, baby. It's minus 27 today, Bernsey. I just <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close me away. It blows me away that they can be where they are with that kind of a differential. But it just goes to show you some stats just don't tell the full story, and that's just one of them. Uh, what I do like, though, is I do like the goaltending effort Washington has been getting. Uh, you know, kind of a wild one in Carolina where it seemed like every shot went in <laughs> for both sides. Those games do happen from time to time, but I, th I think uh, they've done a pretty good job in these big spots. You know, Charlie Lindgren has been a good story for them and uh you know I, i'm 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 gonna watch this one birds i think this is gonna be a good game to watch yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my eyes on this guy in between uh the devs uh 100 uh you're right about lingra man he's six three six and three in his last 10 two two four with a nine two three save percentage he's totally taking the net over from darcy kemper i mean you know but it's not just chuck who's playing well i mean this team defense is playing real solid i mean you know they're they're very they're a very by the system kind of team. They're not a big offensive output. They only allow 2.8 goals. Um, their penalty kit, I'm sorry, their power play has been humming at 34.38%. But the real story has been the 
has been the 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 relifting of the great fucking eight. Christ I mean, has risen this Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Ovi, man, everyone's talking about him all season long. Ah, oh, hang him up. He'll never catch Gretz. This motherfucker's got nine goals in the last 10 games, four apples, plus four. I mean, father time has not caught up. I don't care what the line is. Anytime goal, Ovechkin, you got to ride the, the hand while it's hot. And he's been hot. He had two last game in what was a, a real... Real impressive performance by that entire Washington Capitals team to to win against a somewhat struggling Winnipeg team. Ovechkin gets two. Uh, anytime goal Ovechkin, Bernsey. I love it. I think you go know, anytime Ovechkin goal for the rest of the fucking season. And I think that those things are going to hit. I don't see. You're probably going to hit it 50% of the time. When he gets going, man, he don't fucking stop. You know? Definitely. And the power play has been humming. And he is a. a Big, big part of that reason on that power play. Like he goes to his place. I don't understand why nobody checks him when he's there. It's like, guy, like, how do you not know the puck is coming to him there? Why aren't you creeping up on him a little? I, I could never understand how coaches don't modify their PK system to address a player like that on the op opposite. I don't know. And if any of the teams are looking for new head coaches, I, I might be available. <laughs> and I guarantee you that my PK will be all over Ovechkin in that spot. As long as you only play against the Caps. That's the only time they got to call you in. That's Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I, I, fuck, I got a travel suitcase. I could be there anytime. I just got to drive six hours to Toronto, then get on a flight, and then cross-border, and yeah. Two minutes, I'll be there. No problem. No big Give deal. Give me the shout. I'm ready. So where do you see this game ending up? I mean, do you really think that this, this Larkin comeback, you know, is really what this Wings team needed? I mean, it's not like they just couldn't score goals. They couldn't fucking keep the puck out of the net. They lost some real ugly ugly ones down this stretch. I mean, is, is Larkin the answer here? The only way Detroit's winning this game is if they can get 30 shots on net. And even then, they are not going to beat this Washington team with 22 shots on net. Unless there's abundance of penalties and it's just one of those, all right, well, fucking throw everything you know about handicapping out the window kind of games like we saw when uh, Washington played Carolina the other night. One of our worst nightmares is those kind of games. But we have to go off of what's typically been the case. I mean, Detroit's power play has been okay, but I don't know if it's clicked enough now Larkin's back now they're they gotta like kind of restart that chemistry now again with him and uh kind of build that power play around him like they have um uh, I can see Washington winning that home here and I I don't think I would bet the farm on it Bernsey but I think I would definitely you know throw a couple bucks at it yeah I'm I'm with you I'm all in on Washington on this one uh in the last 10 games Detroit's led up 4.1 goals per game and the offense has returned in 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 Washington. They've scored three point three. Um, so I I think this is going to be a real tight game. I don't think this is going to be wide open. I don't see this as a seven six kind of thing. I don't see it being free wheeling. Um, but I do think this is going to have some nasty nasty edge. I would love to see Tom Wilson to be able to play in this game because I think he'd be cracking some fucking skulls. You know what though, and that's an insane story about Tom Wilson. Is you you thought oh he's out of the lineup now? Like who else do they have? Time to fade them. No. No. They're winning without him against good teams, Carolina and Winnipeg, with no Tom Wilson. How is this team doing it? They're one of the biggest anomalies in the NHL in the past month. The fact that they've been able to make this push, the fact that Ovechkin's getting going, Tom Wilson gets suspended, they're getting good goaltending, they're giving up way more goals than they're getting, but they're winning and it's it's just a real anomaly. It's a lot of head scratchers. Uh, you got to give a lot of a lot of respect and props to that Detroit organization or uh, Washington head coaching uh, to to build this team and find a way to win with the team that they have. Well, listen, man, I, I said this to you the other day, you know, uh, off camera when we were preparing for one of these. You know, of all the the shitbag teams in the East that are that are vying for that last spot, I have more confidence in Washington. That's why I keep dubbing them the wagon. Because this is really the team that is full of veterans. You know, they understand, and I don't think it really bothers them what they've done all year. They understand the position that they're in and how close that they are. And actually, they're in right now. 
So I have more confidence in them than I do in any other team vying for this spot. I don't fucking trust the Isles. I certainly don't trust these shitbag fucking wings, you know? What about your Devils? Do you trust the it's Devils? Gonna be Washington and the Devils. They're going to be thinking <laughs> of the last two spots. Philly's falling out. We got it, baby. All starts tonight. Put the mortgage on the Devs' money line. I hope you guys don't listen to anything Bert <laughs> says. <laughs> Create my no, own ladder I... challenge just with the Devs every way. Yeah, there you go. You'll be restarting it every other game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second game that we got featuring tonight. We got the Golden Knights going into fucking, oh my gosh, Nashville Predators. The Knights are road dogs. I, this line is a little closer than I really thought it would be. Knights are plus 120 here. Nashville, the hottest team in the NHL, minus 140, over under set at six. I mean, does the streak continue? Nashville, 15 0 and 2 in the last 17 games. N number three, uh, a number three offense in March, score 4.3 goals a game, allow 1.9. I mean, they're just fucking rolling here, dude. Never mind the record. Okay, let's look at the facts. The facts are is juicy has been unbelievable for Nashville. Roman Yossi has been unbelievable for them. And what he's done for that team is... You know, I think he's underrated, and I think he should have been getting a lot more traction uh, from all of us guys that judge all these players every night than he than than he was getting. And the fact is, is they're scoring. They're getting scoring from a lot of different goal scorers. You got Philip Forsberg, who's what going for forty tonight. Yep, is that thirty nine? And they're just playing really good defense. They're not giving up a ton of shots. Their PK has been really good. I think they've only given up three power play goals in their last fucking, uh, what are, or 20 or so. Like it's, it's been really good. The one issue I have with Nashville is they're finding ways to win five on five because they're not doing an exceptional job on the power play. Yeah. I mean, you know, I Going back to the defense, I mean, I saw a stat today that they've only allowed nine or more high danger scoring chances one time in the last 17 games while they've been on this streak. So it has been 100% all five on five play. And you want to talk about this team bought in. I mean, we saw Forsberg drop the mitts in the last game. He got a little roughed up, but, you know, he's out there. He's scrumming it up for the boys. I mean, these te this team is I'm starting to feel like a team of destiny. I love it when you see guys like Forsberg, Fight, Crosby, you know, the guys that you wouldn't expect to drop the glove. Because then you could tell that they're just so invested into what's going on on the ice. Their emotions get caught up. You know, tempers flare. You know, they, they have an urgency. There's an excitement to their game. And often, well, not often, but every now and then, it will lead to a dramatic event like a star dropping the mitts with somebody. And everyone's like, holy fuck, this guy... <laughs> this guy's around. buzzing. Like he, either he's really frustrated, which I don't think he is because he's going for 40 goals tonight, or he's just he just wants to win. And you know, this kind of stuff happens from time to time. So on the other hand, you know, we got to talk about the knights. And I mean, like the knights just have not been the knights that we're used to. I mean, like is this a little bit of a weird game with Nashville running this hot streak? I mean, are we are we able to see a turnaround here? The Knights are coming off back to back. They played they played a tough game in St. Louis last night. You know, one in overtime. I mean, the last five games, you know, the numbers say that they've outplayed their opponents. Aiden Hill's hurt. I mean, we're still waiting to hear if Logan Thompson is going to get the go. But I mean, if you want to win this game, it has to be. You know, but he played last night. I mean, he's been phenomenal, right? He's given up one goal in the last four games. Uh, you know, in each of the last four games, no more than one. You know, but I mean, it's just not, it's just not the Golden Knights, you know, what, what, what's going on with these guys? I thought picking up Noah Hannafin, that this guy was going to walk into Vegas and make a immediate offensive impact because he was, he was probably Calgary's best player when, when he was there and he kind of, hasn't really done a whole lot. I mean, he's still a great defenseman. Don't get me wrong, but he, you know, he's been quiet on the score sheet. He's only gotten four points in his last 10 games. And 
uh, I just I haven't really noticed him like I noticed him in Calgary. So I don't know if he's maybe having a tougher time adjusting to you know the different the different uh, you know the team systems whatever it is, but this is definitely a tough spot for the Golden Knights because on a back-to-back, it's always tough. You're going against the hottest team in the NHL, against one of the best goalies, the hottest goalies in the NHL. Vegas has kind of struggled a little bit to put the puck in the net. Uh, you know, they've had their moments, but uh, it's it's a tough spot. And I didn't expect that Vegas game yesterday to be, the St. Louis game to be, a two, one kind of game. I thought Vegas was going to kind of take control of that game and that, you know, that game could have went either way. Like they gave up the lead with just a few minutes left. And then, uh, luckily, you know, Marcia. So made a really questionable decision by shooting from where he did when you had whoever else was on the ice in the, in the high slot, just waiting for a one T, but it worked out for the Vegas. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's a tough one to to look at because right now we don't know who the goal, starting goalie is for Vegas. So if it's not Thompson, it's going to be this plugger guy Yuri Patera, who's one and three <laughs> with a three seven five. You know, it's it's you know I, I don't know. I I, I would want to wait and see what kind of uh, lineup this Vegas team is releasing. You know, Jack Eichel didn't have a very good name, good game last night. He was quiet. Uh, you know, he wasn't his usual self. So it's 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 kind of a weird spot for Vegas because all the pressure is on them. They yeah. are the defending champs, and you just got bumped into a wild card spot. And now this is a spot for Nashville to really separate the two and maybe open the door for somebody else to come and knock Vegas out. I can't see it, but... There's still lots of points out there, Bernsey. There's, what, 12 games left, 20 points, 22, 24 points, depending on your schedule. It's doable. Yeah, well, with the win over St. Louis last night, that definitely gave Vegas some breathing room. They're up five points on them now. If they lost that name last night, I, I don't know how this game would go. You know, it, you could either see just put in the total collapse of the Vegas Golden Knights, but that's it. St. Louis is going to jump them. Nashville will walk over them. Or they may look at this night and say, like, all right, guys, we, we won our spot last night. We have a good little bit of breathing room. Maybe we don't have to, you know, push all the cards on the table. But if that's the case, then they're not going to win this fucking game. Because the way that Nashville is playing, if you don't push everything in, then you're not fucking taking it from them. If Logan Thompson is healthy, how do you not go to him? Like, look Got at it. We're paying you, what are they paying him? Five, six million a year? I forget what it is. You're, you need to step up and play on a back-to-back spot here. You know, the, this whole modified duty for goalies this year that we've been seeing every team rolling with four or five goalies because nobody can stop a fucking puck and nobody can play on a back-to-back night. You know, come on. You played back-to-back nights your entire fucking life. Get out there and go get your team a win. Well, one thing that's going to get me a win tonight has just been Nashville's dynamic duo, man. I mean, it's just, it's death and taxes at this point. Uh, Forsberg, anytime point, he's only been held off the score sheet once in this entire month. Yossi, anytime point, he's been held off the score sheet only twice this entire month. You put those guys together, you got some plus 114 money. I'm going to be all over those boys. You could tell Vegas has really gotten into that one because I'm pretty sure we did the same thing last week and it was like plus 240 or plus 250. Now they're like, oh, fuck, these guys are really good. We got to get they're them on to us. us. Yeah, <laughs> they know. I'll they take plus know. money any day of the week, dude. I don't give a shit. But, yeah. you know, the 240 is kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep an eye and see who the start and Tendy's going to be in for that game. But I, I, I don't know, man. I have a hard time thinking that Nashville is going to stop this streak tonight. Uh, all right, final game on our sledge here. We're going to take a look at Boston against the Cats. The Bees are plus 115. Cats are minus 135. Over under six on the nose here. Now, I, I don't know if you, I don't remember if you agreed with me or not, but I kind of called out Boston last night, uh, last week as a team that really just doesn't fucking scare me, man. Um, they really don't resemble who the hell they were last year. They got no strength up the middle. Um, they're six, three, and one in their last 10, uh, but losing their last two. Swayman's going to get the start here. He's also six, three, and one in his last 10. But he's given up 3.18 goals against and a 903 save percentage. Um, you know, and they've they've given up goals to some tough competition recently. They gave up three goals to the Rangers. That's when you know we were talking about that they could be suspect. We're gonna see which team is gonna jump into the top tier. 
five goals against Philly, who doesn't know how to score, and four goals against St. Louis, who really doesn't know how to score. Um, you know, the Bees in general, their defense has been okay, uh, allowing 2.6 games per 2.6 goals per game, only allowing 28.8 shots, and they have a nice little penalty kill over there at 85.71. I mean, I kind of have this weird feeling, man, that it's really just pasta or bust. And I mean, he's been held off the score sheet the last two games, and they got Dells in both of them. Yeah, and he's had an excellent year, right? Like he's he's chasing down that century mark too. I think. Hey, eh? what's he at? Ninety nine. I think he's at ninety nine. He's he's close. He's right there. But the one guy that's kind of disappointed me a little bit has been Brad Marchand. I, I just haven't felt his presence like we have over over the years. I mean, he's still a little rat, and you know doing shady shit to guys which i never like to see but that's just the kind of player he is but he hasn't i don't think he he hasn't produced like he has over the years i mean he's still averaging almost a point a game but i just find in these bigger spots he's usually the guy that gets it done and i just find he's been a little bit quiet and now you got reinhardt that just got his 50 spot same night as zach hyman the other night uh, you know, and, and Florida kind of went on the little flunk. Like we've seen that yeah. uh, a couple times this year where they'll lose four in a row. Remember that, that homestand, they had seven games at home. I think they lost like five or six of them. Mm -hmm. Right. So kind of confusing how this team can be, you know, very streaky like this. I mean, they had the good bounce back win uh, against Philadelphia, but I mean, that was, that was a fucking big spot on our card for us. We absolutely annihilated that game because of Felix Sands. Did you see the, the, the interview with Torts about the interview? Uh, the guy asking about, so, yeah. It's like, if I say what I'm thinking, I'm going to get fined <laughs> and or suspended. I'm just going to walk off. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, you know what? Can you imagine laying an egg and having to deal with Torts as a coach? And, you know, Felix Sandstorm, he's no. laid an egg for Philly all year. He has not been good by any stretch. So, God, I wouldn't, like, Felix, come into our office. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> Do I can't have even to? imagine what that feeling would be like for him. But Florida did get it right. They, you know, but the problem with Florida is they only had 15 shots on net. Yeah. Any yeah, the other cats goalie, you're not letting in four goals on 15 shots, maybe one, two at the most, which now makes this game a completely different spot. Just a really weird game for a Florida team that usually averages 30 plus shots in net. And I don't get me wrong, Philly's got good defense, and and you know, they're they're a tough team to play against, but it's just kind of mind blowing that. They got limited to 15 shots. Like maybe this this team isn't done their little skid here. And I mean, Boston's no easy task either, but it's tough to give them credit for breaking their four game losing streak with a four one win with a when gift you win. 15 shots against the Pee Wee goaltender. <laughs> yeah, they're five, four, and one in their last 10. Four, uh, they've lost four. And then, like you said, talking about Philly in their last five. Uh but over that stretch, 2.9 goals per game. Um, you know, the power play's been okay, 25.93. Like you said, Reinhardt cracked, cracked the 50, 50 goal mark. I mean, the team in general just hasn't been what we're used to. I mean, even Bob. I mean, Bob's let in some, he's he's caught some L's lately. He's let in an average of three goals in the last five starts. I mean, that's not very Bob like. I mean, do you could you just look at this as a little bit of a situation where it's like, the cats are in, right? The cats know who they are, and uh, and it is a room full of vets, right? They're a team who knows what they have, knows what they are. Do you think this is just a little bit of a mental kind of like, you know, guys, it's a long fucking season. We got, you know, long playoffs last year. You know, it's okay if we lose a couple of these. It's not going to fuck that. Us. No, no, no. Never mind. What, what? What are you talking about? You got Boston's got 97 points. They're right up your ass ready to take over the fucking, uh, uh, the Atlantic. Like, this is, oh my God. Went deep in the play. Smart up, Birds. You know better. They than look that. tired. They look They're, tired as shit, man. I think maybe they just get a little too much credit. They are an excellent team, but I worry about Bobrovsky because he can be bad at times. Yeah. He can, he, you know, sure, he can stand on his head better than almost any goal in the NHL. 
but he can also be not great either. And I mean, I get it. It is a long season and you're going to have good games and you're going to have bad games, but I just don't think he hasn't shown. And it's a confidence thing with, with, with a goaltending too, is you need to believe in yourself to do that. When you start letting in a few goals, a couple times a game, then you go on a four game losing streak. You know, I thought Stellar's played excellent against mm-hmm. Philly. I thought he was phenomenal. And maybe that'll help Abrowski pick him up. Be like, oh, you know what? I, c- I can do this. But the thing is, is like, this is a pretty good, big game for Florida because you got Boston, nip, they're tied right now. And the only reason why Florida's ahead of them is because they got a game at hand. But you gotta you got to figure it out. So what I like on this game is because of questionable goaltending on both sides of this Burnsy with a lot of firepower that can put up a lot of goals on both teams, the over's only at six. It's not even a six and a half. So even if it ends up being a 4-2 uh, kind of game, you're pushing it. I will take the over on this game with respect to subpar goaltending from both these organizations right now. Well, with the goals coming in abundance like you think tonight, I mean, you'd be a fool not to think that Pasta is not going to break 100. Um, he, he's got to find the back of the net. We were talking about Marshawn where he hasn't found much. I mean, he's got one goal in his last 10, but he does have eight assists. So he he is contributing, but it's just not the Marshawn that we're used to. Um, and if you want to keep an eye on somebody else, keep an eye on Louis DeBrusque. Uh, I'm sorry, Jake DeBrusque, Louis' is dead. Um, he's got points in eight of the last 10, 12 altogether. Or no, he's got points in eight of 10, sorry, <laughs> 12 points altogether, uh, including five goals. Totally butchered that shit. Get your shit together here. Um. <laughs> So it's we, a we long I love it. season. It's a long yeah. season. <laughs> <laughs> I need my rest. I need my rest, just like oh, these cats are taking. Oh they're gonna figure God. out and play off time, and they they are coming out of the east. That's where my money's going right there. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't hate you on that one. I'm, I can't argue with you there. But a lot of people are asking me when I went live today. They're asking me, so you know, is Florida making the Stanley Cup Finals again? How often do we see a repeat team? In the Stanley Cup Finals. It's hard. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember the last time. Oh, here's Montreal in the Stanley Cup Finals again. It's just, it's really hard thing to do. So I don't know if I believe in Florida to go the distance this year. Well, shit, man. If you're going to look at it this way, right? Like, it is the hardest fucking trophy to win in all of sports, right? And look what's going on with Vegas. Yeah. I mean, if they didn't secure that W yesterday, and it's not like the season's over, they still have a chance of not even making the playoffs. It is for, a possibility for the splash that they made at the deadline. Everyone hopped on, you know, the Vegas. Oh man, they're going for the cop. This is what's going to fix them. This is what they need. This is what they need. And I get it. Some of their guys haven't, you know, I don't think hurdles played yet. Right. I don't know what his mm-hmm. ETA is, but it's just one of those things where you expect great things, but then you got to allow for an adjustment in time for people to settle into their role with the systems that the team is playing. You're moving. There's a lot of stuff going different time zones for some guys, maybe whatever. Uh, it takes time and maybe Vegas does get it figured out, but it's you expected bigger things from them with that trade deadline uh, kind of rush that they put in to get Hannafin and Hurdle and all these guys. Uh, you know, obviously no stone in the lineup is is this you know it is well, that's, kind of that's huge, man. Cause when he went down, that's really when you started seeing Vegas really starting to stumble. So if they can just hold on, if they can just get into the playoffs, Stone should be ready. You know, like the Undertaker coming back in, you know, game one of the playoffs, he'll be there. Kucherov. And then we could see what happens. You know, we saw the the bump with Larkin in the wings. I mean, maybe that's exactly what, you know, Vegas needs, get their get their guy back. And no, exactly that. And the, what pops in my mind is, is, is Mark Stone, the Dylan Larkin of, of the Detroit Red, Red Wings. You know, you could argue that because but they haven't been as bad as Detroit, but you could see a significant impact on their record when he is out of the lineup just got to get to the dance and then everybody's in and then anybody it's anybody's game from there it's two different seasons completely yeah all right that's going to do us for us over here today on this tuesday march 26th thank you very much for guys watching make sure that you get over and check out uh follow us on telegram make sure you're keeping an eye on les's instagram following that ladder challenge we got some cherry pickers tonight. What do we got for the what do we got for the fam tonight, Les? We got 
the cherry picker. It's here. It's waiting to go into the system. The minute we hang this shit up, it's getting posted to the site for all the subscribers. Big money coming in. Really like this spot. It just makes sense. Now, ladder challenge. I'm so excited. We got that done too on here too. That's getting posted uh, right shortly too. That's going to be up on Instagram. I'll probably post it in Telegram to make sure everybody gets it. And uh, day six, big money tonight, Burnsy. We want to go to day seven. Then we. It's all fucking downhill from here and every day it's gonna make me lose more and more hair because i want this so fucking bad <laughs> <laughs> well we're walking into big money territory we're gonna see who chickens out and who sticks through yeah. but we'll have a recap of everything tomorrow we'll be back over here again i'm mike that's less this is puck you we'll catch all guys next time enjoy the hockey tonight y'all take care and stay well